We've looked at how to create tracks, and as a prelude to recording, I want to spend a few videos looking at tracks in more detail. Now, I've added some more tracks to our session here. I've added an instrument track and some MIDI tracks and a master track, and I want to spend this video looking at the track controls. So first, we have at the top the track name, and we see that there. We have a little drop-down indicator here, which allows us to select between alternate playlists. Right now, there's only one playlist for each track, but we can get alternates like that. We have a record enable button here. This is empty, but in Pro Tools HDX versions, and if you have the complete production toolkit, you'll have an input monitoring button here. It's not available on my version. We have a solo button and a mute button. We have the track display indicator for what type of view we want to see. And we can click here and view between waveform. This is for audio tracks, and this changes for different types of tracks, but we have waveform view warp and analysis view, which pertain to elastic audio, playlist view, blocks, which allow us to view in solid blocks rather than a waveform like this, volume automation, mute automation, and pan left or right automation. Here we have the voice allocation field, and on my system, I'm sort of set at either dynamic voice allocation or I can toggle it to off, and if I do that, it'll make the track inactive. You see it becomes grayed out, but I'm going to put it back to dynamic, and on other more elaborate Pro Tool systems, you can allocate the voices manually. To the right, we have a drop-down selector for the various automation modes, and we can toggle between off, read, touch, latch, or write mode pertaining to automation. Here we have the time-based indicator, whether it's sample-based or tick time-based. We click hold there, and we can switch between samples and ticks. And here we have the elastic audio indicator, and these tracks are elastic audio enabled because of how I imported them. We can click there and change the different algorithms that are used. And we have the current plugin displayed there. You click on it and we get the plugin for that specific algorithm that's used. On the side here, we have a drop down triangle to open up and show additional automation lanes. So we can keep adding various automation to view directly in the edit window here. And here we have a selector for the size of the track. And this presents some different track options, but mainly size here. And right now they're all set to medium, but we can toggle that. Now, these are for audio tracks. Let's look at the instrument tracks, most of the controls are the same. The audio tracks are the most elaborate, but there's one or two different settings in the other types of tracks. So on the instrument track, we have the same things, but here the view display has some different options. We can toggle between clips, blocks, notes, displaying velocity, various MIDI controller data, etc. So different types of view options. And here we have some patch select options here. We get a whole list. If we're working with MIDI devices that use program changes, we can select from over there. And the rest of the controls are pretty much the same. Automation, time base, etc. Then we have MIDI tracks. And again, these are the same. We have different views over here, blocks, clips, notes, and different types of MIDI data. And same thing, a patch selector. And at the bottom, we have a master fader, and that has a much more reduced set of elements to view. And I don't have an aux track instantiated, but again, similar to the audio tracks, but just with a subset of all that's available. Now we can also control the view here. Right now I'm viewing IO settings, but under the menu over here, edit window views, we can have any or all of these various things. If I put all on right now, it'll probably go off the screen. You probably won't see it all, but you can see here we can get various elements that we can view. So we can duplicate functionality from the mix window to here. Let me just put that to minimal. And I'll just add on the I.O. because I happen to find that view useful. Good for assigning ins and outs and adjusting volume and pan directly from here and without having to switch to the mix window. And a couple of general Pro Tools wide commands, but that are specifically important when we're working with some of these track controls. When you change any of these parameters, if you hold down Option, it will affect all of the tracks. And if you hold down Option and Shift, it will affect only selected tracks. And that's useful for making changes on multiple tracks at once. Let's switch to the mix window and look at the track controls there. Now, again, we can customize what we want viewed or not. I'm gonna put all on for the moment and we'll have to scroll a lot, but let's look at the controls briefly. We have color coding at the bottom. We have a comments field and this is on audio tracks and the auxiliary tracks and master tracks are subsets of these. So the controls here are more. So if you understand these controls, you'll understand the other ones. We have three fields here for delay compensation. Right now we're not using any, but this shows the compensation amount. There's a user offset here and how much delay there is. We have the track name, the dynamic voice allocator. And again, you can toggle it off from here, just like in the edit window. There's a lot of duplication, so you can do the same tasks in both. 
We have a track type indicator here. This indicates this is an audio track. This icon indicates it's an instrument track, and this indicates it's a MIDI track, and that indicates it's a master track. We have the volume indicator over here, and this can be toggled to display also the peak level and the amount of delay. We'll look at that in the next video, and we have the value there. This is the fader for adjusting the level and the metering, and this is the clipping zone up here. This is yellow, and this is red on top once signal is playing. I'll play a bit and show you. Let me hit enter to escape this and I'll hit play. So you see the color changes there. It's just a visual indicator. We have an indicator here for automation. This is kind of an antiquated thing, but what it does is it's an auto match indicator. When you're automating, it'll let you know, it'll point either up or down to let you know which direction you have to move your fader in to meet or match the existing automation. We have the solo and mute buttons here, record enable. We have pan controls, and this is stereo, so we have left and right pans and the pan values here. We have a group ID indicator. We haven't looked at track groups yet, but those exist, and you click hold there, and we can have many, multiple groups existing. The automation modes can be accessed here, read, touch, latch, right, and off. We have the output selector here. We click hold for where we want to route to our physical outputs or bus outputs, and we can also switch tracks here and create new tracks from this field. And this is the input field, again, which input we want from our physical interface or which bus input or even plug-in input if we're working with sidechain inputs. I'll put this back to the default for now. And I'll scroll up and we have sends and inserts here. We have two banks of five sends, and this is the send to buses or other destinations. And we have two banks of five for inserts, for inserting plugins. And on top here, this is blank, but on the instrument, channel strip over here. We have some MIDI controls. We have volume and pan. We can select the MIDI input and output routing, and there's even a mute button here. And we have the color bar duplicated at the top. Stay tuned. We'll look at more track controls in the next video.